16, verse 18 and 19, and then I'll read Matthew 18, verse 18 and 19. Amen. To God be the glory. Matthew 16, verse 18 and 19, very familiar passage of scripture. And I also say to you that you are Peter. And on this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades or hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 18, verses 18 through 19. And it reads, Assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by the Father, by my Father in heaven. All right, so that is our foundation scripture tonight. And again, I'm talking about kingdom keys, binding and loosing. How many of you know tonight that there are so many things that we pray for and we wait for God to respond when in fact God has already told us what to do? Oh, let me say that again. So many times we pray and we wait for God to respond when in fact God has already told us what to do. He's already given us strategies that we need in order to succeed. Bible says weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God, through the pulling down of strongholds. And I believe one of the things that God is doing and he's called us to do is raise up. We're not raising up a powerless church. We're not raising up a church that don't know how to function. We're not raising up a church that just has to call on the pastor, call on somebody else. But he's making us wise in our warfare. He's equipping us through the word of God how to function in the spirit and the things of God. Amen. Because God is not going to come to earth and do things that he's already given the church the authority and the ability to do. Oh, I need to say that again. God is not going to come to earth and do things that he has already given the church the authority and the ability to do. And kingdom prayer is divinely authorized uh, to access heaven to invade the earth for heaven's intervention into things that we may be going through right now. And one of the expressions that talk about the authority that God has given us, come on, we talked about he's given us the keys to the kingdom. One of the ways he has expressed that is through binding and loosing. Now, if you've grown up in church, you've heard people talk about binding and loosing. You've seen and heard people doing that, uh, doing that and, and, and what they're talking about is exercising authority. And that is precisely what that phrase means. But I want to take you deeper uh, into the meaning of this phrase and give revelation so that we can have utilization and understanding of how to apply the phrase, amen, so that we can benefit from it. Binding and loosing like we're supposed to. Now, the word binding and loosing is not a magic formula for you to get God to do what you want. Yet it is a powerful formula because of what is stated. For verse 18 says, whatever you bind. And it goes on to say, whatever you lose. First of all, whatever. The scope of that statement is staggering. In other words, he doesn't give an, ex an, 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 an exception. He says, whatever you bind, whatever you lose, heaven is going to back you up. Hallelujah. Or to put into contemporary words, God says, I got you. I got you. Amen. Glory to God. So here's my first point tonight. It's on me. Come on and type that in. It's on me. Glory to God. I want you to get involved in this word tonight. I want you to take ownership. I want you to find your place in the scripture. Come on, type in. It's on me. 
It's my first point. It's on me. Please notice something in the phrase. You are the one binding, not God. Oh, my God. And you are the one doing the loosing, not God. Whatever you bind and whatever you loose will have been done in heaven. Glory to God. So God will back up legitimate binding and legitimate loosing. Can we break this down tonight? Amen. Glory to God. What does that mean? When, when the scripture talks about bind, that word bind, to bind means to restrict. To bind means to lock. To bind means to restrain. To bind means to tie down. To hold something so that it cannot do what it wants to do. My God. Hallelujah. When you bind something, you are limiting its ability to function. Why? Because you've tied it up. You bound it. Glory to God. You wrapped it up. You put a knot in it and you've held it back. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so that's what to bind me. Now, uh, conversely, loosing is to unlock or to release. It is to permit. When you lose something, it is to free something up. And kingdom authority is divinely delegated right and responsibility that has been given to us as believers to act on God's behalf, to rule over his creation under the lordship of Jesus Christ in accordance to his will. In agreement with his word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can I say something tonight? With God's kingdom comes authority and power. With God's kingdom comes authority and power. And one of the ways we can understand this authority given to us is through kingdom prayer. And this kind of prayer divinely authorizes heaven to invade the earth. For the heavenly intervention into our circumstances, glory to God. And one of the expressions, hallelujah, involved in kingdom authority is binding and loosing. I know, you, come on, I know you're walking in power, but we also need to have authority. Glory to God. And, and expressions of kingdom authority is binding and loosing. And again, it's not a magic formula that will allow you to get God to do whatever you want. Glory to God. Jesus makes it clear that we're the one doing the loosing and the one doing the binding. And so here's the key. Can I teach this tonight? Here's the key. When we bind something, watch this, we, we try to keep the enemy off us or from moving toward us. When we're binding something, we're putting a halt to something. Glory to God. So, so, so this is prevention and protection from sin and other works of the enemy. Oh, 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 oh yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. When you bind something, it is prevention and protection from sin and other works of the enemy. On the other hand, when we loosen something, we are already being held hostage by the enemy. It could be addiction. It could be relationship discord. It can be defeat. It can be other attacks that have hold on us. That's why you got to be real with yourself, real with your circumstances. It is what it is, good, bad, or ugly. But you need to know where you are, what's really going on, so that you know I need to bind what I need to bind, and what I need to lose. You know, you, we, we need to be wise in what we do, folks, because it's very po possible to pray, but to pray amiss. Oh, my God, hallelujah. So to prevent the enemy's attacks, you have to use the keys to the kingdom that belong to Jesus. And you have to do it in accordance with the church or it will not work. The first thing that leads up to this statement in chapter 16 about binding and loosing, it is a statement that is specifically given about the church. Come on. Hallelujah. What does it say? And upon this rock, I will build my church 
and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give the keys to the kingdom. He comes with binding and loosing after that statement. I will build my church and how I'm going to do it by binding and loosing. Because the binding and loosing is a specific authority given to the church. And that's very important. My God, hallelujah. Binding and loosing exercises the exercise of authority. It is specifically given to the church. I will build my church. And how am I going to build my church? Because I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to give you access. Now, the reason why that's so important is that you need to remember something about the church that we often lose sight and some don't even know. Can I go deeper tonight? While you come to church for preaching and for singing and for worship and for fellowship and all these things are very important, there is another purpose for the church that is absolutely critical. And that is legislating from the spiritual realm. My God, hallelujah. And this is why we come together on one accord with one mind so that we can legislate from the spiritual realm. That's, that's my next point tonight. We are called to legislate. Come on, type that in. We are called to legislate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Come on, let's elevate. We're called to legislate. The job of the church is to legislate from up there to down here. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It is to legislate. That is to bring heaven into our now, glory to God, or to bring heaven into our history, glory to God, because God already knows the end result. That is the job of the church. It is to spiritually legislate. It's not just to sing. It's not just to praise break. It's not just to preach, but to bring authority from eternity into our now. Glory to God. It is to legislate to take territory. It is to legislate, hallelujah, to take back ground that the enemy is trying to take. It is to legislate to take back what the enemy has stolen from you and is trying to take. When we gather together, we come to legislate. My God, hallelujah, hallelujah, glory to God. So, so it is the church. It is so the church, the ecclesia, the people of God. We're, we're, the, it is the church represent from another realm. Although it's located on earth, we represent from another realm. It represents heaven. Glory to God, but it's located in where we are now. Glory to God, hallelujah. And we come together in agreement. Give me Matthew 18 and 19. Glory to God. When we come together, we transact in business, folks. But when we come together, glory to God, we ain't come to play games and, and look cute. No, 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 no. We come to legislate. Glory to God. Uh, Matthew 18 and 19. And again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. So when we come together, my God, when it comes to enacting heaven's legislation, it's important to have witnesses. And that's the role of the church. That's why he said if there's two or three gathered in my name, I'm in the midst. Glory to God. If I can get people that will come together and get into agreement, we can legislate something. That's why Hebrews 10 and 25 reminds us not to forsake the assembly of ourselves together. The church is more than just a place of preaching, teaching, singing, and fellowship. We come together to legislate. All the reasons are essential. All that's important. I'm not dis diminishing any other thing. But we also gather to exercise spiritual authority in the spiritual realms. Come on, you know the word for we wrestle. Not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, spiritual darkness. In we, Come on, when we gather, we legislating. We're pushing back depression and mental illness. Come on here. And, and suicide. Come on. Glory to God. And, 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 and traps and plans of the enemy. And we got to do that in unity among witnesses. 
When we pray, we must be in agreement. We must be on the same page. Glory to Jesus makes it clear, hallelujah, that all authority in heaven and earth belongs to him. But the Bible backs it up and says there's one mediator between God and man. The mediator is Jesus Christ. But he says when the local church comes together in power and agreement, glory to God, he said, I'm in the midst of you. Can I help you? That's, that's why we fight to be on one accord. My God, that's why one of the things the Lord hates is discord, because when we legislate, come on here, glory to God, you know, I don't care if they're in Congress and they're trying to get something passed, come on, what they need is agreement, <laughs> Woo! if we're going to get something through, come on, can I teach, we need agreement, we need to get enough votes to get this passed. But here's my third point tonight. Jesus must be the center. Jesus must be the center. How do we know that he's in the midst of us? See, see, and this is why we got to get to, folks. See, many believers pray in Jesus' name, but just leave him wherever he is. Can I say to you tonight that Jesus must be the centerpiece of the decision? Oh, my God. He must be the centerpiece of the consideration. You cannot throw him in or tag him on it. You still got to pray it's his will, it's his way. Come on here. See, so many believers, they pray what they want and then try to add in the name of Jesus. And Jesus is nowhere in the midst. No, 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 folks. He has to be the center of it. It's not praying without, and, and then just tagging him in. And sometimes it's not that we're not trying our best to do, but, but sometimes you, life just happens and you're dealing with life. But in spiritual warfare, the problem is that something has to be solved up there to give us victory down here. My God. Holly, you got to know what his will is up there so that you can have victory down here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's why we sing the song, Hallelujah. You have won the victory. You have won it all from me. We're not fighting for victory. We're fighting from a place of victory. And, and the power and authority for victory for this battle doesn't rely on the ground where people are fighting. My God, hallelujah. I, I said the power and the authority for victory of this battle doesn't rely on the ground where people are fighting. The weapons of our warfare. You know how we're fighting on our knees. You know how we're fighting binding and loosing. You know how we're fighting in the spirit. Glory to God. See, you can go back and forth with your mouth, but I hope that you're praying and decreeing and declaring and calling those things which be not as though they were. The victory should come from what's happening in the invisible realm. Determining whether we won or lost. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Come on here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. This is how I fight my battles. And so we learn to use the key of binding and loosing. Let us remember, while we're the ones that's enacting this, all of our movements should be done according to the word of God. Only then will this key yield results when we bring God's will into fruition here on earth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And we have to move. We, we have to move into that place. We got to move into that place. Glory to God. And folks, we got to understand this. Glory to God. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it is by his spirit. And one of the things the Lord told me is that he's increasing authority in my life. Not just the anointing, but authority. Glory to God. But you got to learn how to steward that authority. 
It's by the anointing. It's not by you. Glory to God. It's by the anointing. And so we got this seat tonight, and if it's on the head, then it's falling on you. Okay, if it's on the head, then it's falling on you. But I need you to see tonight that binding and loosing is connected. I need you to see how they're connected and how they're different. See, because if you're disconnected from the church, you're disconnected from the legal authority in the spiritual realm. I want you to read the whole text. And upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail over it. Another translation says the gates of hell shall not overpower it. Glory to God. So, so, so powerful uh, is the church I'm building that hell can't stop it. That's what the word says. Now, now listen, it didn't say shall not overpower me. It says shall not overpower it. Woo! It didn't say the gates of hell shall not prevail over me. It said the gates of hell shall not prevail over it because it's referring to the church that is legislating from heaven. So when you see hell defeating the church, it's because we're not building Jesus' church. We're building church our way using Jesus' name. But I don't know about you, but I want to do it God's way. I don't want a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Glory to God. And he says the church that I'm building up legislates. The Greek word ecclesia is for church, which is a legal term for legislation. It says the gates of hell. Now, again, that word gates, I'm telling you, I'm giving you information tonight. Gates is a legal term. In the Old Testament, the Bible says the elders met at the gate. It's like saying the city council meeting or the city hall or the Congress or the parliament. It was the place where legislation was made at the gates. So it's a legal term. So hear me, because hell does not defeat you with power. Why? Because God is the greatest power. We shall never be defeated. Hell defeats you with the legality. Oh, y'all don't want to talk in here. Hallelujah. Hell does not defeat you with power. Hell defeats you with the legality. That's why the Bible says, hallelujah, give no place for the enemy. Come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Give no, give no breach. Come on here. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's why we got to stay covered, stay under the blood, dwell under the secret place of the Most High. Hallelujah. Why? Because hell operates on legislator legislature it operates legally glory to god and that's why you got to say i need to, i'm gonna be covered glory to god i'm gonna stay in right standing with god come on here glory to god I, i'm gonna stay in the will of god come on here i'm gonna run to the mercy seat come on i'm gonna repent when i need to repent glory to god i'm gonna repent of sin of omission and commission come on i'm gonna run for my i'm gonna run hard after god i want to stay covered because i don't want to give place to the enemy Come on, glory to you. That's why fathers should stay in place. Husbands should stay in place. My God, husband, be the husband around the house. He said the gates of hell shall not overpower it. He's talking about the church. And then he goes further and he says, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Well, kingdom is God's rule. He said, I'm going to give you keys so you know how to operate under God's rule. I'm going to give you the keys for dominion, for authority, for power. I hope I'm helping you tonight. And he says, I'm going to give you access to me to legislate. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to give you the keys. And whatsoever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Glory to God. And so we got to know the difference. Come on. We're binding and loosing. I said we're binding and we're loosing. So what's the difference, Bishop? Teach tonight. What's the difference between binding and loosing? Again, when you bind, 
When you've been binding something, you're tying it up. You're keeping it from mobility. You're keeping it from moving. To bind means something is coming after you that you want held back from you. My God, hallelujah. You want it to be tied up. You, you don't want it to get through. Come on here. You don't want it to be able to penetrate you. Glory to God. It's holding evil. Glory to God. You're holding back hell off of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, so that's what binding is. Something is trying to come upon. And I need to bind it up. Glory to God. Now you loose. Now loosing is because it already got you. He's already pulled up your grill. Enemy's already controlling something. You already addicted. You already living in defeat. You already relationally in discord. You already miserable. And you can't get out of it. And you need to be loosed from that hostage that's already taken to taking you. Glory to God. So to bind means something coming after you. To loose is to cause what's already, hallelujah, got you off you. I, I wish I could say that a, a, a little better, but, but you get it. Glory to God. Binding is keeping him off of you. Glory to God. Or anything that is influenced by him. Because you do know hell influences everything. Teach, Bishop, glory to God. Hallelujah. I said hell influences everything. So binding ought to be in your language. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The enemy comes as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So every time, every chance I get, I'm binding the enemy. I'm binding the hand of the enemy. Staying the hand of the enemy. Hell influences everything. It influences debt. It influences bad relationships. It influences addictions. Hell can influence any area of your life. Sickness, disease. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you got to learn how to bind. Glory to God. You got to bind spirits. Glory to God. You see some things trying to come upon your children. Come on. Glory to God. Temptation and peer pressure. You got to bind that stuff up. Glory to God. You, 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 you see harassing spirits. You got to learn how to bind it. Glory to God. You, you feel like holly, sickness is trying to come upon you, trying to get work. You, you bind. To bind means to keep it from having an illegitimate dominant influence. So that's why you got to know where you are, folks. And then to loose means it's already having an illegitimate dom dominant influence. I'm already in debt over my head. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I don't need to bind that. It's already happened. I need to be loosed. I'm already in debt over my head and I can't get out. I'm already in a bad situation. Don't act like it's not bad when it's bad. If it's bad, it is bad, and now some things need to be loose. Glory to, I'm already addicted to something. Glory to God. I'm already held hostage, and nothing is working, and I need to be loose. I need to be set free from it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm approving in Scripture. Glory to God. He says to bind. To keep it off of you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. And he said, whatever you bind, I got you. And whatever you lose, I got. In other words, heaven will back you up. Bind on earth. That means refers to your physical location. Right now you're here on earth. Glory to God. But you got power with God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And you got, what does it mean for something to be bound in heaven? Well, you, if you look up the word heaven in the Greek, in that text, you will find that word is called air, which is where spirits dwell. And the Bible says that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Oh, y'all don't want to talk tonight. This isn't referring to heaven as a place that we go after we die, but rather a realm. Glory to God. In other words, so the Lord said, I've already seated you in a realm. My God, hallelujah. And the Bible tells us that we are seated in a heavenly realm with Christ, Ephesians 2 and 6. See, we as humans were below the angels and demons. 
But as believers, we are now seated, my God, hallelujah, Hell, in another realm, seated with Christ. Glory to God. And so it's referring to a spiritual realm, the air, where, where spirits dwell. And we understand, according to Ephesians 2 and 2, that Satan is known as the prince of the air. So the Lord says, because you are seated with me, because I've given you power and authority, when you bind something on earth, it'll be bound in the, in the spiritual realm as well. This gives us the ability to bind demons. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Binding is a powerful witnessing tool. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you got to move into that place. Jesus even taught us. In Mark 3 and 27, Jesus taught us to bind the strong man. Then we can plunder his house. <laughs> In other words, you will get results later, but you got to bind some stuff first. You've been trying to witness to somebody and I get nowhere. Bind up darkness. My God, I prevented that person from seeing the light. Glory to God. Now listen, you can't bind a person's will or force them to accept the gospel, but you can do something about the demonic oppression that's holding that person back. Now, can I talk about loosing tonight? Glory to God. Loosing is like binding. Loosing like binding on earth takes effect in the spiritual realm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Loosing have refers to loosing of a captive or a person in bondage. And sometimes we've been bind, binding something when we should have been loosening it. G give me Luke 13 and 12. Can I prove it in Scripture? Can I prove it in scripture? Glory to God. The Bible says there was a woman who was stricken with an infirmity for 18 years and she couldn't get better. But when Jesus set the woman free in Luke 13 and 12, let's read that. When Jesus saw her, hallelujah, he called, to, he called her to him and said, woman, you are loose." From your infirmity. My God. Hallelujah. He didn't bind up the infirmity. He loosed from the infirmity. Because you loose what's already have you captive. My God. Tonight. Hallelujah. Other common theology on loosing. Many people believe that loosing refers to an act of just loosing good things in a person's life. Glory. But we see through scripture. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It gives us an example. Jesus loosed a captive. Sometimes you need to pray, loose them and let them go. Sometimes when there's sickness in your body, hallelujah, loose me and let me go. Come on. When there's bondage on your mind, loose me, loose my mind. Come on. Glory to God. When your money is under attack, loose my money. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Loose my children. Loose my family. Come on. He heaviness, be loose. When Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You bind demons and you loose the captives. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You bind everything that's trying to take root. You bind everything that's trying to come. Glory to God. But when you understand that some things have already set in, you begin to loose. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, if the problem is the gates of hell, he says you must use the keys. You must use the keys. And you don't have a private key ring. You don't have your own keys. We in this together. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And here's my next point. Hallelujah. Come on, if you with me tonight, just say loose here. Loose here. That's what you got to say sometime. Loose here. Loose your grip. Loose your hole. Loose here. That's why you got to know where you are. You got to know what's already happening so that you don't be binding what you should be loosening. And here's my next point. Do it in advance. Do it in advance. Come on, type that in. Do it in advance. I'm going to say it again. When you bind something, you are forbidding it. You are prohibiting it from happening. But loosing is the opposite action. 
When you loose, I feel the anointing. Hallelujah, because we're getting keys tonight. We get language, glory to God, and we're wise in our warfare. Hallelujah. When you are loosening something, you, 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 you are untying something, loosening it. You're setting it free. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we do this in prayer. We do this in prayer. If you see something happening around you and you know it's not right and it's not godly and it's demonic and it's injustice and it's in a complete violation of the word of God, watch this, not your opinion or not your feelings, but you know it's not the will of God and you see some things trying to come upon once you identify that this is not the will of God, you have the authority to bind it up and to loose the kingdom of righteousness. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So your prayer, your prayer will sound like I bind up pride in the name of Jesus and I loose humility. So you would loose the opposite of what you're binding. My God, I'm telling you tonight, you loose the opposite of what you're binding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you can even pray this over yourself in whatever, in whatever area you see you may need it. I bind depression. I'm not depressed, but I feel like that depression is trying to come upon me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I bind depression. Glory to God. I'm feeling some type of way today. I'm not myself. Come on. I see my attitude changing. I'm not bound up, but I see something happening. I bind you, depression. I lose joy. I lose strength. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I bind up fear and I lose the love of God. When you bind up something, you think of the opposite to loose over the situation. Hallelujah. And do it in advance. My God, my God. Don't wait until you get in a situation and th then things get tense before you go into glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe that's how we should pray. Come on, intercessors. I'm giving you key. Every time we come to church, glory to God, you should be binding. And you don't bind just because something is bad. But you got the revelation. I know the enemy will want to hinder the move of God today. I know the enemy want to stop God from moving. I know the enemy will want us, uh, would want to uh, throw a monkey wrench in our service today. So I'm going to go ahead and bind you in advance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm going to bind you up. Glory to God. I I'm going to bind it. I'm going to go ahead and bind it now. Glory to God. If I feel like something is coming as a distraction, I'm going to go ahead and bind. You got to learn how to cover stuff you have. If you have an event, go ahead and you need to pray over the event you have and bind, bind up stuff. You having parties and celebrations. Don't just have parties and celebrations. You better cover it with prayer. Come on. You better bind up confusion. Bind up what could go wrong. Come on. Bind up the tricks and plots of the enemy. Glory to God. I don't care when you have assignments. Glory to God. I don't care if it's funerals or celebrations. Go ahead and bind it up. Bind it up in advance. Come on, you need to be binding stuff over this school year. You don't wait for something to happen to start binding it. Glory to God. Come on, we bind every day. I bind up accidents, incidents. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I bind up the weapons that may form. Glory. I ain't going to wait for something to happen to pray. I'm going to pray ahead of time. Sometimes you got to wake up, especially when you have big moments in your life. You should have a sneaky suspicion that the devil will want to rain on your parade. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. You got, you got to cover vacations. You got to cover plans. You know, me and my wife went on vacation a few weeks ago. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, I, the, the place we went, it almost never rained. And when we got there, they was talking about it was a hurricane. Glory to God coming our way. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And you know what? Glory to God. Just in my own time, just little on me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I was like, Lord, we got some things to do on the agenda. Uh, on the agenda. We already got an itinerary. And we'll need all this rain messing up our plans. I can't get nobody in here. Glory to God. I said, Lord, we here and we want to have an enjoyable trip. Glory to God. Would I have you to know, hallelujah, the rain held back 
until we were able to do everything we wanted to do. Glory to God. And then on the last day, we just had a chill day and all the rain came and all that stuff, but, but it didn't complicate nothing. See, you got to learn that you may say that's deep, glory to God, but you got, you better learn how to cover everything. You better learn how to cover moments in your life and do it in advance. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. When you show up to services, Lord, I I'm just going to go ahead and pray now. I'm a bind and I'm a loose. I'm helping somebody. If you know that you're about to face a confrontation or a bad situation, start binding and loosing even before you get to the scene. You know you're about to have a meeting and it may be delicate. Start binding and loosing. Lord Jesus, this will ensure that things are in order before you show up. And even if they're not perfect, it won't be as bad as it could be. I can't get nobody because God has already sent his angels to take care of it before you arrive. You've been given two keys. You've been given two keys. Holly, don't just show up. You better have bind and loose some things. To unloose it means to untie it and to free it. Can I say, say this to you tonight? I'm helping somebody. I'm giving you keys tonight. Anything can be bound or loosed. Woo! Anything can be bound or loose. Oh, this is a key, folks. You can bind up words <laughs> so they cannot be spoken over you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Or they won't take effect. I can't get nobody. You can bind up words so they cannot be spoken. Glory to God. Or you can loosen words so they can be spoken. You can bind and loose spirits. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can bind up the plots and plans against you, your family, your job. And you got to do it in advance. You got to do it in advance. I heard somebody say this today. It isn't mine, but it's good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They say if the enemy doesn't plant trees, he sows seeds. And you got to learn every day, all day, enemy is trying to plant seeds. Seeds of discord, seeds of doubt, seeds of unbelief, seeds of fear, seeds of jealousy. The enemy doesn't plant trees, he sows seeds. And when you understand your heart is a field, you watch out for seeds that the enemy will plant. And you start rejecting stuff. Negative words, things that aren't lovely. Things that are not of a good report. Glory to God. You heard something that wants to sow discord in your heart. You start rejecting stuff. You don't water it. You uproot it in prayer. You bind it and you bind and loose it. I bind that that will not grow and mature in Jesus' name. Come on, glory to God. I see the enemy trying to creep in with, with self-esteem. Glory, we unroot that in Jesus' name. We bind the effects, the, the, the negative effects of those words and those negative words. Woo, hallelujah, hallelujah. See, you got a choice, beloved, to accept or reject. My God, hallelujah. And here's my last point. Thank you, Jesus. Find agreement. Find agreement. Verse 19 says, if two, or three, if two of you agree on earth about anything that they ask, it shall be done. Glory to God. I'm telling you, my God, hallelujah, all that's attached to binding and loosing. Agreement. Glory to God. Two or three witnesses. Hallelujah. It's not a novel concept. It's all through the Bible. Two or three witnesses were used for confirming something legally. Hallelujah, because it's used even in trying civil cases. Glory to God. And Jesus takes the principle of legality. And he said two or three witnesses. Glory to God. And he connects that even with binding and loosing. 
Why? Because we're seeking to do some things in the spiritual realm. Glory to God. And he said, now for two or three shall every word be established. Glory to God. You know, you know, we gave a prophetic word that money was coming on Sunday. Glory to God. And I saw money just flowing and I released that to the church. And by the time I left, somebody said, Bishop, I saw the same thing you saw. Glory to God. I saw what, what was that? The Lord was confirming the word. And you know what I said? Well, out of the mouth of two or three. Every word is established. How many know God will confirm what he's doing in your life? When you connect with people, glory to God, we, we got to be connected so that we can be who God has called us to be. And we got to fight for agreement. Glory to God. You got to let folks know if we going to show up, we going to show up in one accord. Why? Because we got legal authorization. And out of the mouth of two or three, if there's two or three touching on anything, one can chase a thousand and two can put 10,000 to flight. Hallelujah. That's why Paul and Silas got the breakthrough. Y'all don't want me to teach tonight. Glory to God, because even though they was in prison, they was in agreement. <laughs> Hallelujah. And they began to pray and they began to sing praises unto God. That was agreement. And their praise binded the enemy. Glory to God. Holly, because praise steals the avenger. Y'all don't want nobody in here. Even if I'm in a storm, let me get somebody that will agree with me. My God, hallelujah. And because the two of them got an agreement, there was a major breakthrough. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, so there has to be agreement. Glory to God. Keep the devil off of whatever category he's, he has on you. Get him off you. Lock him down. Bind and loose. And you got to move into that place. Glory to God. He said, and when you get into agreement, glory to God, hallelujah, I'll do it. You, you, see, you see Moses, and they were fighting the battle in Exodus 17 chapter. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that they were down in the valley fighting. And Moses' arms was held up. And as long as his hands was up, the people in the valley got the victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But Moses' arm got heavy, and he got tired. But he had somebody that got an agreement that said, we ain't going to let you drop. And Aaron and her held his arms up. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. So, yeah, God gave them power, but there was also agreement. They were saying, we're in this thing together. Hallelujah. Folks, I'm telling you, agreement is one of the most powerful things. Hallelujah. And that's what you got to ask, folks. Will you agree with me for my victory? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I don't, I, you know, I'm very strategic in this hour. Can you agree with me in prayer? This is what I'm believing for. Can you agree with me? Because if we ain't in agreement, there's no need. I don't need nobody helping me bind and loose that's not in agreement. Glory to God. If you don't, if you don't like me, I don't even want you praying for me. Because if you don't like me, you don't want to see me succeed. I can't get nobody in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We got to be in agreement. Thank you, Jesus. You have just everybody praying. No, I don't need everybody praying. It's the factual fervent prayers of a righteous man that's going to avail much. Can you agree with me? And if your faith is not on the level where I am, I'm good. I, then I don't need you. If you can't see God doing what I need him to do, we good. You just ain't my prayer partner on this. You can't hang with me on this. My God, hallelujah. Because this next level, folks, and if you can't agree with me for that next level, I don't need to waste my time. Woo, my God, Holly, if your faith ain't strong enough for what I'm believing God for. Jesus, glory to God, then I'm good. I'm good. I ain't got to waste my time. We ain't got to go there. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'll come to you and I need prayer of a, hand, of, 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 of a headache. Maybe you believe God can do a headache. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But I need some folks that really believe. Do you believe God can heal cancer? Come on. You my posse. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe that God's going to give favor and open big doors, double door? Okay, you my people. But if you ain't there yet, it's all good. I'm telling you tonight, and I'm, I'm closing on this. I'm closing on this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That there's authority. Hallelujah. And you need to be, uh, how can two walk together except they agree? Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're fighting for your marriage, if you're fighting for successful singlehood, if you're fighting, glory to God, we need to be in agreement. God, within God's conditional, God has a conditional will. And, and this promise of binding and loosing is a conditional will. He has authorized us, glory to God. And he said, listen, if you do your part the way I've called you to do it, I'm going to back you up. But the condition is you doing your part. Glory to God, hallelujah. And folks, I found out something. You got to learn how to go to God for yourself. Because you got too much going on to be calling on somebody else every time you go through something. Well, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. <laughs> you better get in a Bible. Uh, you better get in a good local church that's going to teach you the word of God because you got too much going on on a daily basis. For every time something come on, you got to call on somebody else. You better open up your own mouth, get the own language that you have, learn how to bind and loose. Come on. Now, we can agree with you. Come on here. Glory to God. But your prayer partner got their stuff going on too. Glory, and, and, and they got their own stuff going on too. Glory to God. And they got stuff going on that you know about and stuff that you don't know about. Glory to God. So we ain't saying we can't work together. Glory to God. But, but, but one person can't be pulling all the weight. Teach, Bishop. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we got to learn how to bind and loose. It's the key to the kingdom. We don't wait for trouble to come. We don't wait. You, you bind and stuff. You bind and stuff. And sometimes God will give you insight. And sometimes God, uh, you'll be led in what to pray. And you'll be led in what to bind up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then God will let you pick up some stuff. Glory to God. He'll let you see what's going on in the atmosphere. And you will pray strategically against that binding it up. So that it won't take root. Glory to God. Hallelujah, so that it will not take root. But you got to do it in advance. Let's give God praise for his word tonight. I'm not out of message, but I'm out of time tonight. Glory to God. But let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Let, 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 let's give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So we bind and we loose. We bind and we lose. Come on, we dealt with two kings keys tonight. We bind and we lose. We bind and we lose. To God be the glory. Father, I thank you for grace tonight upon your word. Thank you for grace upon your people. I pray that they've heard your words tonight. I pray that understanding has come through your word in the name of Jesus. Understanding has come. Peace has come through your word tonight. Hallelujah. Revelation has come and will never be the same. Thank you that we are strategic. Thank you that we're walking in warfare. Thank you that we're walking in victory in every way. We give you praise for what you are doing and we thank you that we'll be that much more effective and powerful in Jesus' name. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I don't know. This, 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 this teaching blessed me tonight. Glory to God. Gave us deeper understanding. Hallelujah. Gave us deeper understanding. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We bind and we loose. Thank you, Jesus. We bind and we loose. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're not just doing one. Glory to God. Not just one without the other. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, but you got to be real with where you are. I hope 
that the eyes of your understanding was enlightened tonight. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I pray that this word was a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Glory to God in Jesus' name. All right, come on. We're going to do two things tonight. Glory to God. If this